la 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 You're listening to That Gets My Goat. You should know better. Uh, welcome, people. <laughs> that was a good one. More fun like that to come, everybody. <laughs> this is That Gets My Goat, and I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. Uh, I don't imagine we'll go very long on this one, and I, I have a lot of experience at not going very long. Yeah, it's because we're going to abbreviate everything and start combining words into one starting with batfleck <laughs> uh yeah while we were apart i was human too oh while that's we were... <laughs> that's so sweet <laughs> while we were apart i see that was really really clever actually while we were apart uh they announced warner brothers announced who would be playing batman in the sequel to uh to not the dark knight non-sequel of batman the sequel the to man, man of steel, steel. No, oh, and there's no the. Huh? It's just Man of Steel. Oh, I don't know. Is there no the? Is I that... believe there's no the. Hmm. There is an of. Okay, that's probably plenty. And I don't. How many episodes would you say we have dedicated? Or we have <laughs> mentioned Man of Steel in many, many, many. Pretty much every episode since it's come out has at least had a mention. Even when we were talking about uh, Boba Fett. Bo- Boba Fett? Where? <laughs> I, I know that people have to be sick to death. I know there are people out there that liked the movie, and it's got to bother them that I bring it up again and again. Yeah, the funny thing is somehow you managed to bring it up about how much you disliked it, even in the episodes that we actually recorded before The Man of Steel came out, but we put onto the feed after. I don't know how you, you did that, but that was really impressive. Well, see, I, I went to that Comic-Con panel a year before it came out and knew I wouldn't like it. <laughs> no, I, I had no idea the depths of, of, of dislike I would have for it at that time. At, at the time, it was just like, oh, no, that's what the way you guys are going? Oh, no. Oh, come on, you guys. No, Superman stands for all that is good and all that is, is, is hopeful. Oh, you guys? And then, yeah, I didn't realize that it would be insanely violent and haphazardly directed and repetitive beyond belief you know I, but but i think my main problem is that still that that the character of superman represents something to me is it fair to say this was a betrayal of that or if i mean if you were the devil's advocate would you say well no this this is just another take on who superman is or could be and it's just as valid as your take is i suppose devil's advocates might say that that's why they're in hell. Uh, hell's <laughs> filled with court judges, barristers, failed <laughs> High court saints. judges. High court, yes. We've got cardinals, certified accountants, music critics. They're oh, all here. Yeah. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I wanted to talk about Ben Affleck. Batfleck? Uh, yeah. Um, or you can just say Baffleck. It's like a romantic couple. Thing, you know, like they said, Benifer when he was going out with Jennifer Lopez. Now he's going out with Batman, so it's Batfleck. People just don't. That's how lazy we have become. Yeah, it's too society. hard to say full words. It was like my moron roommate from California who would say late instead of later. It was just. Uh, it's hard to say later. That's two syllables. When one syllable will do, why would you do that? Because some people revere the English language, some people like words. Yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, so l- here's my warning. If you loved Man of Steel, I'm probably going to s- criticize it again in this conversation. Um, so just skip to the end and listen to our uh, creative comments. There you uh, go. Yeah, that's the good part message. I wanted to do this episode before the Ben Affleck announcement was made. Batfleck. <laughs> Basically, I, you know, I complained to my mom a couple times about it and about getting old and, you know, that's not who Superman is and how many people in Metropolis died just because he's not Superman and they had to show that aliens are bad or that humankind is bad or movies are bad. They succeeded there. And then she just decided to go see it one day and, and she uh, said, you know, that movie wasn't that bad at all. And I really liked that movie. Kind of like, you know, don't you parent me don't you tell me what not to go to you know kind of thing i brought you into this world sort of thing 
And I, I, for some reason, it really bothered me that my mom liked it. Because I'm like, Mom, A, I told you not to go see it. And two, I told you how bad it was. And you not only went and saw it, you liked it. I, I guess it just showed how little respect she had for me and, and that she would continue to have little respect because she disagreed. And I, I thought about it. And I think I even thought of calling you, although you were out of my life by that point. And I, I had to <laughs> say, dude, why can't I just let it go? Why, why do I keep dwelling on this? Why do I keep thinking about this movie? Because I've seen a ton of bad movies in my life, some even worse than Man of Steel. And yet I just go to it again and again and again. It's a scab. And I enjoy scraping it off and watching it heal. And, oh, it's about to heal. <laughs> I scraped it off again. So, uh, Doctor, would you just <laughs> so take, take a moment and, and why can I not let it go? I don't know. Uh, tell me about your mother. Why do you say I'm not Sigmund Freud? <laughs> Do you remember that line? That was from uh, Bill and Ted. Why do you keep telling me you're Sigmund Freud? Why do you say I'm not Sigmund Freud? Oh, I can't take this. Tell me about your mother. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I I'm guessing that Superman means a lot more to you than perhaps you thought before you went and saw this movie, film. I, th I think Superman, you were like, nah, Superman, Superman. But you've told me again and again about how you think the first Superman film from what was it 78 mm -hmm. 78 Superman film was that's your still your pick as the top superhero film ever am I right that's right doctor hasn't changed since all I mean even after the Avengers it has not all changed. these films that have come out since then there's been I, I would say the majority of superhero films have come since that movie I'm trying to think of any from before it, really, when it comes down to it. There was, well, there was a 60s Batman movie. There were oh, okay. Superman there was the, and the Mole Men. There were serials. Right. I don't know if those ones count, if anybody's even seen those. I mean, shoot, I guess there's the the Fleischer cartoons that are fun. But And then there was the TV, TV show. It was a TV show, right? The one that had George Reeve in it? Sure. George Reeves. Christopher Reeve. Yeah, isn't that it's, it's the weirdest thing? But yeah, people switch them all the time. And I can kind of forgive that because it's so close. Yeah, I always thought it was Christopher Reeves for some reason. I don't know why. Because I'd never heard of George Reeves. So, really? Yeah, not until like I was an adult. Hmm. It was not something that ever... And the whole curse of Superman thing, never heard of that thing either. Until? And what? Probably... When they put out that big box set and they had that super detailed documentary about Superman we'll and the whole the history, everything Superman, including that awful Supergirl film and everything else that went along with it. I like Helen Slater. <clears throat> Good. And that mentioned the Superman curse? Yeah. Yeah. They mentioned that whole thing about how George Reeve died. Oh, didn't he kill himself? Depends on who you ask. Uh, uh, there was a movie called Hollywood Land. That was made six years ago, seven years ago, and it was all about the death of George Reeve. <laughs> so now I'm Can't doing it. Can't get it right. Huh? And you know who played George Reeves in that movie? Uh, Brandon Ralph. <laughs> no, but it, it was Ben Affleck. Oh, really? It was Batfleck? No. No, he was Supfleck. It was Soupfleck. Yes, in those days. <laughs> but that was really, really interesting because... There was always mystery and was there a cover up and did he really kill himself? And if he did, how do you kill yourself in this way? And he had made enemies and uh, that probably was the first installment in the Superman curse there. Yeah. But, but they've talked about that, that, you know, and anybody who works on a Superman movie or plays Superman, you know, has something bad happen to them, except for the many, many, many people who that don't. Didn't. Yeah, something bad. Yeah, that's kind of the way those curses tend to work. That was a sidetrack, a, a tangent, if you will. Yes, I had told you, and I still tell you that the 1978 Richard Donner film is my favorite superhero film. Yeah, I think that's so. That might be one of the reasons why you were very, very upset at the uh, way this film turned out. It it took the character from your favorite superhero film of all time and. Made him very, very different than uh, the way you see him in your mind. That, And you were a young child when you first had this 
cemented in your mind too. So, you know, it's, it's a thing that you've held dear for your entire life, basically. So it might have something to do with that. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out why. I'm not really good at psychoanalyzing. I think when you do that, you're supposed to ask questions. But you know me. Why very, do you very say well. I'm not Sigmund Freud? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm guessing that that must be the reason behind it. The uh... well, uh, he, uh, one time this song came on the radio, <laughs> and I had heard it before and thought it, that it was pretty lame. And it was by the Crash Test Dummies, and it actually played on the radio. And. Uh, there was this line that I used to incessantly mock with my friends. You can probably predict what the line was, because it is silly. But it's, Superman never made any money. Saving, saving the, the world from Solomon Grundy. Anyhow, this song came on the radio one time, and, and I didn't switch it. I don't know if I would have been tempted to. But there's this part in the middle of the song where... Because uh, it's, it's not just about Superman. It's about Tarzan. There's a verse about Tarzan, then there's a verse about Superman, then there's the cur- the curse, then there's the chorus, uh, and then there's a bridge <laughs> where he Superman. says, uh, and maybe you remember it, uh, sometimes when soup, what was it, sometime when soup was stopping crime, I'll bet he was tempted to turn his back on man and join Tarzan in the, the jungle. And then it says, but he didn't. He kept changing his clothes in dirty old phone booths. You know, and fighting for us until the the work was done, uh, and there was nothing more to do but go home. And the the chorus, of course, says, you know, sometimes I despair. The world will never see another man like him. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I, in fact, I'm 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 re- reliving that right now. I'm getting emotional about it. I felt like such an ass for mocking this song because I thought, you know what? I've never thanked Superman for all the things that he's done <laughs> for me. And I just cried. I, I even remember where I was. I was driving through through this little town where the speed limit was 30 friggin' miles an hour and I would always get pulled over and I was just bawling about this thing. And it's like, Superman, I'm so sorry. Afterward, I, I told my friend and he's like, I said, what? In kind of a similar way. It's just like, why would I have this reaction to this song? I know Superman's not real. And he says, well, I think what it is is you're a giant pussy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for some reason, I've loved that song ever since. And I always think about that. Uh, that's the Crash Test Dummy song for me, not the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's funny because I think I may have mentioned this to you at one time. But apparently, Crash Test Dummies are Canadians. No, no! <laughs> oh, well, I take back everything that I said. And I had no idea about this. So I was talking about mm-hmm, to, to my wife. You know, that's the song that everybody knows. And I'm like, surely you know this song. She's like, no, no, they sang the song. And she's talking about the Superman song. And I'm like, no, nobody's heard that song. <laughs> Nobody knows that. I don't even know that song. I didn't even know the Crash Test Dummies. I thought that that somehow they did it. Because I used to hear my friend Ian, who we've talked about, he would sing that line to that song. Superman, me in the morning. And he would sing it all like that, too, with the voice and the whole bit. And then I thought, he must be singing like a Jim Croce song or something from the 70s. Because who the F is Solomon Grundy? Nobody's ever heard of Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy say there is. Nobody would make a song about it now. So it has to be like a really old 70s song when Solomon Solomon Grundy say there is. True source of evil. Because, you know, that I, I, you know, I watched all those Super Friends episodes. I still didn't, didn't know who Solomon Grundy was. If you don't believe me, maybe Grundy demonstrated on you. How did I never hear of Solomon Grundy? But because the scenes in which he appeared, you were having sex. Oh, that's right. I was having sex in fourth grade. Wait, you what? started young. <laughs> <laughs> but you had heard once there was yeah. this podcast. Yes, everyone has heard that song. And, <laughs> and so, yeah, I was saying that to her. I was like, no, you don't know that. And she 
was like, no, everybody, it was always on the radio. She went on, insisted, no, this Superman, Solomon Grundy, say there is. You know, it was weird to hear my wife do the impersonation like that, but you know. <laughs> and she was insisting, and, and I was just like, no, dude, you don't know anything. You're crazy. And then we looked it up, and yeah, she knew the song, and it turns out that's why. Because, yeah, in the United States, that song was like number 96 or 99 on the Hot 100. But in Canada, you know, every Canadian artist gets like an automatic, you know, 99 point boost on the Hot 100 just for being Canadian. So she knew like Alanis Morissette before she was Alanis Morissette. She was just called Alanis Oh, really? In Canada for a while. And she had some song about where it went like, never too hot, never too cold, you're never too cold, too cold to hold, or something like that. This really poppy, cheesy song. How do you know that? She, she's told me about it many times. Oh, okay. She likes to tell <laughs> stories over and over again, too. Yeah, she's she's told me about how she knows Alanis. Because, yeah, like four years before she was Alanis Morissette or something, she did have that song in Canada. No one knows it outside of Canada. I, why would they? I remember one time she told me that she knew Justin Bieber so long before we knew Justin Bieber that he was only known as sperm. <laughs> That's Dick right. Man. That's only a year before the rest of us knew about him, though, unfortunately. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's crazy that she would know that song. I just I, I found it so weird that Ian and my wife knew about that. I never had heard that song. Like, I still have only heard it like once or twice. And I never cried about uh, how I didn't say thanks to Superman because I never heard it enough times to get past the, the Solomon Grundy line, I guess. I need to go drive through that town where it's 30 miles an hour. It's 35 now. Ooh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Progressivism. How did we get on this? Um, we're oh, just... uh, the, my love for Superman. Well, do, do you not have love for Superman? You have to. I've got a picture of you. Wearing nothing but a sock. No, I'm sorry. Other than that, I got a picture of you dressed as Superman or Clark Kent or something like that. It was Clark Kent was my... Uh, although I was actually Superman another time. I've used Superman as my costume twice. How about that? Okay. One time I just had the little cape. My, my son was Superman for uh, Halloween. Like It was the year that Superman Returns came out. And so all the costumes were that. And so he got the Superman costume that year. And it had just this little goofy cape... And yeah, the cape like came down to like my butt. This was as far down as it went, I think. But uh, yeah, one time just usually I was lame and I would just not dress up for Halloween. But this year I decided, okay, I'm going to go just beyond lame. And so I wore a Superman t-shirt and then I put that cape on and that was my costume. <laughs> and all I got was, why did you wear a brown cape? Those were the comments that I got. But, uh, yeah, I was also Clark Kent just last year. Wore, a, like, a suit, you know, a shirt and tie. And my I took the <laughs> took the lenses out of three, 3D glasses <laughs> so that I had some big hipster-looking glasses and really thick horn-rim ones. And then I had a Superman T-shirt again underneath that I just I left the shirt unbuttoned and pulled off to the side so I could pull it open and be like, this looks like a job for... But yeah, I'm I'm kind of like you. I mean, I saw... We're basically the same age. So I saw Superman when I was very, very young and very, you know, in those formative years. And I loved it. You know, Superman 1, Superman 2. I Superman 2, ugh. I watched that thing over and over again. I just loved it. And yeah, you know, some of the stuff I still remember the having seen it the first time. Like when the helicopter's falling and she's falling and then he catches her and goes, Don't worry, I got gotcha. you. You've got me. Who's got, Who's got you? You know, those those things that and you're just laughing. Or the guy that was climbing up the side of the building on suction cups. And Superman flies up to him. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely have I have feelings for Superman. I need to I need to deal with these feelings. I need to look into it and figure out what they mean. You love Superman. I just need- not in that way. Yeah, um, I don't know, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I guess I'm not, I'm not as offended by this movie as you are. I have to admit, but I also really disliked it, similar to the way that you disliked it. Even though we saw it completely separate, we didn't talk about it right afterwards, and you didn't say like, "Oh yeah, this was sucked." No one, yeah, you're right. 
That did suck, Rish Outfield. Thank you. Thank you for clearing it up for me. I didn't have anything like that. I was so afraid that you would said that. No, I, was, I thought it was really good. It's man. Great. Oh, I can't wait to see it again. Can't wait to see take Batfleck my, with him. Can't wait to take my children to this. And, I took my children to it, too. That yeah. was the sad part. We were all like, yeah, we're going to go see this movie. And we all went and we paid like full friggin' price for it. Although I think we at least saw Matinee, so there was that. But yeah, it was like our big, we're all going to go see a movie together thing. And then it turned out to stink. And on top of that, I think I bought a ticket for my wife, too, and then she couldn't come. Oh, jeez. So we paid, paid an double. extra. So I guess we didn't get a matinee price after all. Well, I mean, the only comparable movie for me was the 2007 Transformers. I brought, used to bring that up all the time because I was just like, how can anybody who you know liked Transformers prior to that like that movie? It just it it was shockingly bad to me, you know. I mean, it's just ineptly made and all that stuff. And 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 then there were sequels, and I just refused to go see them. And and uh, I would hear people tell me about them, and I just shudder. It was just like stories of campfire stories, ghost stories, <laughs> <laughs> like stories about the Holocaust, stories oh made to scare children. And I I think it's probably that I love Superman more than I love the Transformers. Yeah, I would believe that to be true. But anyhow, they've announced, you know, the sequel. And they I think we talked about that because I was in the room when they announced that the sequel would be, you know, Superman and Batman together. And uh, they make it sound like it's Superman versus Batman. And they quoted from The Dark Knight Returns in which they are enemies. So everybody is anticipating the big throwdown kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if I, I need to go see it or not. But what did they do to try and make you want to see it? They probed my darkest dreams and said, What could possibly make him want to see it? And yeah, they, they threw Ben Affleck in there. Now, for those of us who haven't heard you talk endlessly about your fantasies involving Ben Affleck, what is your fantasy about Ben Affleck? So why why would Ben Affleck matter? I I really like Ben Affleck. Yeah, why is that? I I, I don't oh, know that I understand. I have no idea, Doctor. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you about my father. Okay, tell me about. No, your I, I I I don't know. I I think it's partly just I was introduced to Affleck through the Kevin Smith movies. Oh, okay. And so did you did not see uh, Hunting Goodwill Hunting? I did, but Goodwill Hunting came out i think the year after chasing amy and two years after mall rats chasing amy just really spoke to me Mm -hmm. uh, on many many levels and i was just i was really blown away by that movie despite its low budget and despite the the limitations of its director i connected with that movie and i I connected with the, the conversations about star wars and the romance and the the ending that bleak unhappy ending that it had and and i just i really liked that guy and then i and then he showed up in other movies after that before he became like this huge star and i I would assume that it was armageddon that made him the huge star but i don't know was it uh was it goodwill hunting i i'm not sure i mean goodwill hunting matt damon he and matt damon won their oscar for uh writing that film so that i mean i don't know to tell you the truth when they burst upon the scene of regular folk um but yeah it was definitely that one where i first under you know knew ben affleck it's weird because mall rats i don't even remember that affleck was in that i all i think about from that movie is jason lee it's all jason lee that's the only person i remember from that film and then you know the side characters like jane silent bob and what's his face who was trying to see the uh, sailboat in the picture the whole time <laughs> You dumb bastard. You know, those are the ones that I remember. I don't even... I mean, ben Affleck, I'm assuming, was the main dude, right? No, he was the villain. He was the guy that was taking Shannon Doherty away from... He was the sleazy guy that worked at the mall and, and liked to have sex with women in a very uncomfortable place. What? Like the back of a Volkswagen? Exactly. And he and Kevin Smith really hit it off or something. like. I mean, Kevin Smith just loves Affleck, and he put him in... 
Chasing Amy and Dogma and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back and Jersey Girl and Clerks 2 and, you know, I mean, just anything that he could do with Affleck, you know, that was... So you like Affleck mainly because of his association with Kevin Smith, though, and not so much because of whatever else he's done. Not because of clear and present danger. Did you become a a guy who would read... Some of all fears. Whatever. One of those (laughs) stupid Clancy. Did you start reading Clancy books because he was in the... uh, no, I started reading Clancy books because Harrison Ford was... Ah, there. okay. So you started with Patriot Games then, way back then, or did you... I mean, that was the first one I bought, but... You know, I, I <laughs> he's made other movies that I've liked, including the one that, you know, shall not be named because I'm the only person that likes that movie. But but I, I just, yeah, I really, really dug that guy. And I, I knew a lot of people that hated him, that hated him the way that I hate you know, my least favorite actors. And he's like, I don't don't want to see a movie if he's in it. And it's just not something that I ever got. And then the pu- public in general really turned on Affleck when he and Jennifer Lopez were going together and when Geely came out. Yeah, but you loved Geely. That was I, the... You know, I didn't actually see Geely. <laughs> really? How could you not? But I did see... That was the pinnacle of Affleck's career. By, by pinnacle, that means it all starts going down from there. <laughs> Yeah, everybody really turned on him for that and the whole Benefer thing. And I think it was just that it's like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, which strangely, they've actually avoided the backlash that you get from something like that. But when you become that couple that everybody constantly talks about every bit of news, every it's like, you know, Paris Hilton for a while, you know, every time you turn on any of those shows that talks about stars up to something, they never go like even one segment without mentioning her much less a whole show like and, yeah. kim kardashian today right like kim kardashian else? is now and has been for a couple of years now and yeah she'll fade away and somebody else will take her place or, and that, or Lindsay Lohan, yeah or uh, i guess miley cyrus is on every yeah so. miley cyrus is starting to try and take over for kim kardashian she, i guess she's more taking over for Lindsay lohan than kim kardashian she's taking over as the young Child actress turned complete idiot. <laughs> but um. it, it is really interesting. I mean, if, if we were able to look back on it historically, there was just a, a huge paradigm shift. And, and, and Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, both of them were roundly despised. And for a while there, Affleck's career totally suffered. And he would have movies that nobody would go to and eventually... You know, he'd have to either do supporting roles or his movies would come out straight to video. And I think and that's during how he that, wound up in that Superman one. Yeah, I, I mean, basically that that was during that dark period, and and he took a step back and he decided to direct, and somehow through directing he worked his way back into the favor of the public. I guess. I mean, the the three movies that he directed, I think each one brought a bunch of people back into the fold and then with Argo you know winning best picture and all that people are like hey this guy had talent after all you know what I mean I I remember for years and years people said well Damon is the talented one of that friendship and Affleck is sort of the hanger on but you know now a lot of people at least have said wow look you know Affleck is good at something you know he he made a really really good movie you never saw Argo right I haven't no not yet I would like to see it sometime though and uh, he was riding high, you know, best picture, 2013. You know, what what could he possibly do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and then this Batfleck thing happened. And, yeah, oh, the claws came out, huh? The, the backlash. Surely you heard some of the backlash at your work or in your family or, you know, your children. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I did hear any backlash. I have a brother-in-law, when you speak of my family, who... He's like your mother. He loves. I mean, he he. I think he even downloaded like a one of those illegal. Like somebody took the camera into the movie theater and filmed the movie off the screen, and then made it available to download as a torrent. I think he downloaded one of those so that he could watch it again and again. In between now, when he's seen it in the theater, and when he buys it on DVD, he just wants to enjoy it all the many more times. Yeah, he really liked that movie. You're talking about Man of Steel, right? Yes. Okay. He liked that so much. He, having Superman and Batman and oh, it's Affleck and oh, it's going to be so wonderful. Uh, I'm sure that's all he thought. Oh, but you haven't actually heard from him? Well, he never 
said one thing or another, I don't think about it. But about yeah, Ben Affleck? If he were to say anything, I'm sure it would be like, oh, I love it. I can't wait. I'm going to download the torrent now before they even film it. Oh, okay. See, because I thought that the, the vast majority of people were outraged about this, about Ben Affleck thing. And, and all of that hate came back and they started saying Benifer again. Jennifer Lopez has, has managed to turn that whole thing around too. I think that was because, was it, is it American Idol that she's a judge on now? Was, was it The Voice or was it American Idol? Maybe it was American Idol. The Voice Christina is Christina Aguilera, Aguilera. Was on The Voice. I think. Yeah, I think it was she got on that and then all of a sudden like people thought she was cool again. And then she started doing music again and having like Pitbull on her video and all that kind of crap. Mm. People do these days. When they do a song, they can't just do it their own song. They got to have somebody else. I don't know why that is. Oh, well, it's kind of like Superman versus Batman. I yeah, guess. maybe that's what it is. Okay, well, I, I, and you've spoken to no one that was oh Ben Affleck. What, they, what dude? What I've they been thinking? living homeless. Okay, but my, I'm lucky. The people to, at the soup kitchen had to have had nobody at the soup kitchen said anything. They're just like move along, you no know, get moving, no soup for you. And then they took it up. You got to do things just right. I wonder what became of that. <laughs> was it Larry Thomas or something like that? I got you. Got to do things just right, or else the soup kitchen people get mad. <laughs> Huh. And if you were homeless and you didn't have internet access. I, yeah. But oh my gosh. So I, I wanted to share some of the tweets with you. You never saw no tweet. Don't give No, me no, that. no. But somebody had compiled, and, and I'm trying oh, to remember okay. who it was, compiled a list of like the 50 best tweets about it. People just, they were amusing in how angry they were uh -huh. and how much they blew it out of proportion. <laughs> but uh, it was mean. And. Uh, I suppose Affleck has been through it all before, and so you develop a really thick skin. Rhinoceros thick. Wobbin thick. I, I wanted to share some of these tweets uh, just because it's the only time I've ever read tweets. But, like, can you read Frankie Boyle's tweet? As a dad, I have to go to all the big superhero movies. Ben Affleck's casting has actually made me love my children less. Richard Dreyfus tweeted... You read for a part, you feel good about it, you feel confident, then they cast Ben Affleck. <laughs> you want to read the nap? <laughs> Better Batman than Ben Affleck. One, Paula Deen. Two, a cat's butthole. Three, Ben Affleck's mom. Four, a number two pencil. Five, Don Knotts. Six, caulk, which is that stuff you put around windows and like bottoms of toilets, right? Caulk. Hey! Seven, all of China. Eight, ACDC. For those about to rock, we salute you. Come back, Val Kilmer. All is forgiven. <laughs> this guy <laughs> says, named Dieter Dusseldorf, said, in tears, you know what? I slept on the bat fleck thing, and I think it may work. Puts gun in mouth, pulls trigger. Dieter Dusseldorf. Read Sam Logan's. I am really worried Affleck could introduce character problems into this sequel to the movie where Superman murdered a guy. This guy Chase M Mitchell said in the Ben Affleck version, Batman's parents kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is not even Pol Pot cast Affleck as Batman. <laughs> I guess I was uh, carried away with that. But, uh, oh my goodness, people freaked out, and it was the end of the world, and they didn't feel fine about it. So now, that's the question of the hour. What do you think of Ben Affleck as Batman? I think it'll be fine. I don't know. I mean, it can't... <laughs> I've said this about some various films. It can't make it worse than the last one, for sure. Uh, it can only go up, it seems... But you're talking about... Right. This is a sequel to Man of Steel, so uh, that's the one I'm speaking of. I didn't think Man of Steel was very good, so I don't think it would be a bad thing to put Batman, played by Ben Affleck, in. I don't know. People have talked about, like, how will this work out? Because Ben Affleck is, what, like 40 years old, something like that? And the Superman is supposedly brand new. Henry Cavill is a young dude, right? I don't know how old he really is. I think he's like 27, but I don't know how old he's supposed to be. But, yeah, I mean, he seemed like he was supposed to be pretty darn young in the, the movie anyways. I don't know. 
But, uh, yeah, they talked about, like, Ben Affleck was going to be, like, the Batman who's been around the block doing this for years. And Superman is the young buck now. And he's going to learn some things from Batman. I don't know what the deal is, how that's going to work out. But I don't know. I think it could be fine. Gives him another chance to get Superman right instead of wrong. We'll see what happens. I doubt it. But, I mean, it's still Zack Snyder, right? So he's going to do the Zack Snyder thing. Well, I, I, you and I have had so many com- I mean, I've had conversations with everybody about it because everybody has their opinion, uh, except for the people you talk to, apparently. And I think that with enough work, you could redeem Man of Steel. You could redeem that movie's ending and say Superman saw all those people die in Metropolis. And he realized the responsibility that he had being here, you know, that he could be Earth's protector and he could ensure that that stuff never happens again. And he could realize that he could have avoided that just by flying over the fucking ocean or up into space or on the moon or out anywhere back to Kansas where nobody lives. And he's just like, holy crap, I've got to change who I am. I have to win back the hearts of the Earth's people. I have to become a symbol for them that there is good out there in space and that there's good within every, you know what I mean? I've, I've got to stand up and be Superman. I don't think they'll do that because a lot of people really liked Man of Steel and a lot of people paid to see it again and again. And if a movie made, you know, $700 million, why fix it? But it's also yeah. possible that you can have Batman step in and say, you know, I don't have any power. And yet I do all I can to protect my city and to protect the, you know, the innocence of Gotham and all that. And you have unlimited power. And how do you behave? And, you know, smack him in the back of the head and say, this is how a superhero is supposed to be. That's not Batman. Batman doesn't do that. Superman's the one that would say that to Batman. And Batman would be like, leave me alone. This is my city. When it breathes at night, it's my air. That go-, You know, all that stuff that Frank Miller gave Batman. But I think it could work the other way with Batman saying you have the chance to be something, to be a symbol and to be everywhere at once. And if I could be everywhere at once, no child would cry at night in my city. You know what I mean? No, no guilty would would be rewarded and innocence punished anywhere. I don't know. I mean, the, 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 the interesting thing about Superman and Batman in my lifetime has been that they are both heroes, but they've got very differing attitudes and very differing ways of going about it and maybe frank miller has shown like the extreme example of you know maybe a psychotic batman and all that and a super square jawed almost dumb superman but you know there's still an in between that can satisfy everyone i mean i don't know i don't know how they'll they'll do it i mean maybe they'll say that man of steel 2 takes place years later and superman has done all this stuff. I mean, Batman rises later. I, I I don't know. Setting Superman up first and then Batman is weird because he was the first superhero. He was the first alien or whatever. I, I, I don't know. I, we, we've talked about that, that Earth finds out that, uh, that there are extraterrestrials through Zod, not through Superman. Not that there are good extraterrestrials, but that extraterrestrials are bad. And that one of them has been living among us, which narratively just doesn't work. I don't know. I guess people can argue with that, but it it just doesn't. It's so much better if we have one that we love. Somebody that's like, no, no, they're not all like that. And I guess I'm looking at the Richard Donner films. When those three supervillains come down, we already have Superman. I mean, the president of the United States. So Superman will help us. I've heard them say that they wanted to examine what it would really be like if Superman came among us and that we would distrust him and that we would despise him and that we would fear him. But he just didn't give us any reason to overcome that. Mm -hmm. At the end, doesn't he threaten the military? Doesn't he say, you know, I saw you were just trying to spy on me with a satellite and so I threw it to Uranus. You know, I I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Except for he's kind of hot, so... That makes all it all better. That's the way it always works. Okay. I, I, and yeah, I, I think that this whole conversation was supposed to examine why, why I can't get past it. And all it does is just stir up more muck. And I, maybe I should like make a New Year's resolution to not mention Man of Steel anymore. Well, you haven't mentioned 
Transformers in a long time and how bad they are. So no, we until did they're... in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode. But yeah, maybe maybe this will just take over for your Transformers fixation until a new movie comes along that takes over for the Man of Steel fixation. You know, it'll just it'll, it's cyclical. It'll come around to something. Maybe the Ninja Turtles will take care of the Superman for you. Who knows? You know, there wasn't a lot of outrage to that episode oh, that we did about the Turtles. And it's weird. I, I was almost disappointed by that. Hmm. I like Turtles. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> okay. You, you, no wonder we're friends. But the thing that I came out of the Transformers trilogy with was if I hated the first one. Why would I ever go see the second one? And I didn't. I never saw the second one. And I never saw the third one. But they didn't cast Ben Affleck as Megatron no. in the next No, one. they didn't. But you know, Affleck has made lots of movies that I've not seen. Uh-huh. And I think I would be a hypocrite if I said, oh, I'm really looking forward to Man of Steel 2. I'm going to go see it. The wise thing would be to say, no, fool me once, shame on you. And I, I don't know what will happen. Two years from now, we'll have uh, Avengers. The day that we're recording this, they've moved up the release date of Ant-Man. So it's that same summer. Ostensibly, Star Wars Episode Seven is supposed to come out that summer. And so, I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff to distract me from seeing the new Superman movie. I, I, it's easy to say right now, I, I'll just go see Avengers 2 again. That's my 2015 resolution, is to not see Man of Steel 2. Whereas my 2014 resolution is not mentioned, Man of Steel. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You got to put all your resolutions need to be Man of Steel based for the next while. But what what about you? How likely are you to go see Superman, Batman, Man of Steel, Batman, Man of Steel? Will they call it Man of Steel Dark Knight? Bat of Steel. Bat of Steel. Hey, oh, Okay. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, the, the fact that they put Batman in it almost makes it seem like it's not really a sequel. Like it's totally... A, this is a new one. I don't know what it is about it, but it. I probably won't see it the day it comes out. But I hardly see any movies the day they come out anymore. I'll probably see it when it gets into the dollar theater. I mean, I still haven't seen The, the Wolverine. Hmm. And I've been actually watching... Going by the dollar theater every now and then, looking for it to show up, and I'm I'm assuming I'll see it then. And I would like the Wolverine, I'm sure, a lot more than this one. So I don't know that I'm going to be so against it that I won't see it. But yeah, I won't expect much from it. It'll be uh, worse than when I went to see this first one after you had primed me again and again as to the fact that it was going to be crappy. I still kind of went in there thinking, Nah, I think it'll be good. And then it was crabby. But yeah, I'm sure, you know, all those other films that you've mentioned already that are supposed to come out that summer, I'll see those much quicker. I mean, we might have a Finding Nemo sequel that summer, too. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I can't remember. I, there, but there will be lots of stuff competing for your dollar. That yeah. one will be probably one of those that I don't see immediately as well. Really? I, I really like we'll Finding Nemo, We'll have Nemo to have an too. episode about that, too. Cause I, and we were going to do a... A whole Pixar episode where we went through all the movies and we talked about the, the the Pixar rules of storytelling. And in fact, I think at one point I was really ambitious and I said, that'll be an incentive that gets my goat. And we never did that. That's because we only have five people that listen to that's my gets my goat to begin with. So an incentive, you really only get about 5% of people to go for it. So that's less than one person will want this incentive. That's right, but the five people that listen to that gets my goat are all really, really cool. That's true. How could you not be? Okay, well, we've talked a heck of a long time. Let's go get something to eat. Yeah, seriously, we we deserve it. All right. Well, hey, I've been Rich Affield <clears throat> Fleck, and I'm Big Affleck Levitch. <laughs> Thanks for listening. See you later. Good night. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves. If we get together tomorrow, we ought to talk... We ought to A, talk about Batman, B, talk about your new house, C, talk about the flooding, D, talk about your douchery, 
and try to get that damned Jack and the Beanstalk episode recorded. I doubt we'll have time for all of it, though. We need to get Man of uh, Man of Steel. We need to get Announcer Man to uh, do a warning. Warning! Man, <laughs> man of Steel references. <laughs> Rish is going to go off again. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I have things I want to say, but let's turn it over to you and let you talk for a minute, because... I just have no energy. What's wrong with me? I don't know. Maybe it's because we never went and got something to eat and we decided we would do this first and then reward ourselves with having recorded something so now we can get something to eat. So this is going to suck Sorry, the whole way through. You're supposed to start this out with a story, though. You can't turn time over to me because I, it didn't happen to me. The story was your mom. Hey. Uh, the uh, 